Horizon Cable Update. I'm David Lyle on the Open Spec Dashboard PTL. Um, I just want to start off with, you can go to the next slide. So I just want to start out, like a lot of these, reminding what, what our mission statement is in Horizon. Basically, uh, to provide an extensible unified web-based user interface for all integrated Open Stack services. So we want to be a, a unified uh, user interface for all the open tech services that are part of, that are integrated into the release. Um, obviously, with the big tent discussions, that scope may creep out a little bit, but um, for now, that's that's still the still the range of, of what we're trying to accomplish. And then the other big item is we want to be extensible. So we realize that uh, we can't deliver all all functionality that you would need to operate a cloud uh, or provide your end users via Horizon. Um, er, Every cloud I know of runs other extensions, other things that they want to manage. So we want to be able to have that extension mechanism so that so that when you go and set up a cloud, then you, you can plug in um, other functionality in Horizon. So just a little re recap on Juno. Uh, some of the big additions were uh, support for Sahara. Uh, Sahara came out of, or was added to the integrated release in Juno. Um, we have rich support for um, creating clusters, creating jobs to run on those clusters, um, to do MapReduce and other uh, other data processing operations. Um, so that was a big addition for us in Sahara. Uh, there's a there's a lot of functionality there, uh, and I encourage people to check it out. Um, better plugin support. Uh, we had a primitive plugin support uh, mechanism. Uh, that we added in late Ice House. Um, in Juno, we fleshed that out a little bit better, um, allowing you to pull in um, more of your static files, things like JavaScript, um, images, um, other things that um, make allow you to do a, a f more full-featured extension. Um, this also helps operators move away from the model where uh, basically you'd have to pull down the Horizon uh, repo and then hack the code inside of Horizon to extend it. That's really not a, a great model for, for anybody who's trying to deploy code and then keep it up to date with trunks. So we've, we've been working hard to provide a better mechanism. Um, the next item that we, we did was UX update. So we, we kind of locked into some older technology, um, some older versions of Bootstrap for uh, our styling and, and JavaScript and other things. Um, we finally got past that uh, so we can be a lot more, or pull in a lot of the bug fixes from upstream, a lot of the styling improvements, a lot of the UX improvements. Um, so now we're, we're currently up to date with Bootstrap and a lot of the other underlying libraries that we've, uh, we're dependent upon. Um, and so that's been a great, great step forward. Uh, the last big thing I'd like to point out is um, Lance added the um, metadata catalog concept in the Juno release, and Horizon provides support for um, both viewing and updating metadata properties on uh, things like images and volumes and post aggregates. Um, and so we provided a nice widget for that, and um, that functionality was added in Juno. Uh, there'll, be a, there'll be further enhancements of that in Juno. Uh, so what's next on the, on the deck for Kilo? So the, the first item is going to be uh, support for Ironic. So Ironic graduated um, in, the, in the old mechanism. Again, with the big tent model, things may change. But we plan on supporting Ironic in the Kilo time frame, um, both for end users and also for operators. So um, end users will have the option um, when interacting with Nova to set up uh, a bare metal instance rather than uh, they'll have that option. And then operators as well, too, um, both you know, specify new nodes and then bring them in uh, and allocate them. Um, so at the summit, we spent a lot of time talking about how we were going to provide better user experience going forward. Um, that's been a big focus of, of mine since I, I became PPL, I'm trying to take Horizon and make it a lot more user friendly. Um, and so about a release ago, we decided to, to start moving towards Angular JS as, as a more of a client-side architecture. Um, the reasoning behind that is just to provide um, better feedback to users um, quicker 
uh, try not to do so much data loading on each request. Um, so push a lot more of the, of the UI onto the client side, cache data there, um, and be able to do, operate on a lot more data um, on, and provide that information back to the user a lot quicker. So in Kilo, one of the first things we're going to do is work on a, a reference implementation for how, how Horizon is going to move forward in this transition. Um, the focus of this will be on the identity dashboards, uh, or identity dashboards, so panels like projects and users. Um, and when you bring in Keystone V3, you'll get groups and roles um, and domains. And so this basically will use that uh, as a way to set up um, the reference implementation for going forward on how we're going to use Angular um, and and how, other, how others can use it in extensions going forward as well. Um, part of the improved user experience effort that we've been working on is improving the table experience. Uh, so right now, the state of the each service has slightly di or has different APIs, and Horizon kind of thinly represents that API to the user via a, t a list or a table. Um, so the filtering is inconsistent currently. Um, Pagination is inconsistent. Um, the different APIs do different things with pagination. They provide different filters, um, different ways to search, essentially. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to move a lot of that onto the client side as well. We're going to try and uh, cache a bit more data on the client and provide the pagination and the filtering um, in the Horizon code rather than relying on the APIs to do it. Um, in, in that way, we can um, provide a consistent user experience, so the user doesn't have to guess as they're, as they're moving through the Horizon UI and, and, and landing on a new page and trying to figure out what, what the paradigm is for this page. Um, so again, this is, this is just trying to improve the user experience, um, put more information at the user's fingertips and allow them to uh, find data a lot more quickly and, uh, and, and accomplish the task that they're trying to do. Um, uh, additionally, as part of the user experience, so we implemented a wizard. Uh, I believe that was back in late Havana. Um, I thought it kind of sat stagnant as we were trying to move forward, um, but it, it, it's, it's a primitive wizard. Um, uh, so a step, um, a step workflow, essentially. Um, we're going to refocus on that in this release. Part of that is with the Angular implementation. So um, in, in this release, We'd like to get the launch instance workflow or uh, wizard um, greatly improved. Um, that's one of the biggest usability issues with Horizon right now is that the launch instance uh, workflow is just very confusing, um, requires a lot of knowledge up front. Um, so we're going to try. We've been working with uh, the OpenStack UX team um, for the past release essentially to, uh, on design uh, to to get a better workflow on that and, and move forward. Um, as part of that, th that'll be implemented on, on the client side as well. Um, and so we, we want to make sure that we're not kind of painting ourselves into a corner on the implementation. So we're going we're gonna to do the network wizard as well, um, just to make sure that we have a, an extensible format, extensible widget on the client side that, that we can um, reuse. We're going to continue to refine the plugin support. As I said before, it's really important that we have a clean plugin mechanism um, that doesn't involve editing the source code in the Horizon repo in any way or the Horizon package when it gets shipped. Um, right now, the plugin mechanism does require you to, to add files um, into the directory where Horizon gets deployed. Obviously, that's, that's not. <laughs> And that's not optimal, uh, and it causes a lot of problems um, when you want to go and update a package if you're doing it with a with a with a systems packaging system. Um, so we're going to continue to refine that so that it's um, you can point to where that plugin mechanism is um, again, and then we're going to have to refine it a little bit to provide better Angular support as well as we as we're moving more in that direction. Uh, better theming. So another big concern um, for operators is that um, they don't want to sh ship Horizon looking 
the same as everybody else's UI, um, especially if you're putting it in front of customers um, or you're wanting to do re uh, reseller model. Um, it, it, we need to be able to theme it better, and we need to be able to do that without hacking into the Horizon code as well. Um, so the goal for this is we've, we started down this road. Um, we started pulling out the appropriate variables that uh, for coloring and, and some size that, uh, that operators would want to change to change the look and feel. Um, we're going to continue going down that road and, and, and provide a hopefully a much better uh, theming mechanism that um, is a lot easier to leverage. Uh, federation and single sign-on. So we're working with the Keystone team to provide federated authentication. Um, obviously, uh, a lot of corporations that use OpenStack have a have an authentication backend already uh, where all the users are set up. Um, they don't want to have to pull that into Keystone or all that user information into Keystone. They don't want to have to. Um, duplicate all that. So we want to provide the federation to, uh, a mechanism to do that federated logon. Um, come along with that come single sign-on where um, if you're authenticate, hopefully if you're authenticated into your corporate uh, authorization system already, then once you come when you come to Horizon, you wouldn't have to re-authenticate. Uh, Multi-domain identity operations. So um, Keystone V3 has been out <laughs> since, uh, since Savannah, actually. Uh, it may, yeah, I think it's Savannah. Uh, there's support for multiple domains in there. Uh, we support that to a degree in Horizon. We need to do a much better job. Um, part of that is you want to have a much richer uh, set of roles than um, admin and, and member. Um, to do these operations, you want to have, say, a domain admin. Um, we can't really support that right now because we don't, um, they don't interact with Keystone the right way. So we're going to tackle um, adding that support in this release. So that should provide. This will be a step forward, also on the uh, hierarchical multi-tenancy path um, that the Keystone is implementing in Kilo. Um, so this work will be leveraged in that as well as what's already there in Keystone V3. Um, another big thing that we've been pushing on for a couple cycles is getting integration tests going. Um, so for a long time, Horizon ha had uh, just, just unit tests. Um, we had one integration test that ran in Tempest. Uh, it still does, actually. Um, but we've been working um, heavily on trying to get an integration test suite set up uh, and going. And so we actually have we have quite a few uh, integration tests that run against the Horizon Gate jobs now. They're not they're not configured as part of Tempest because um, we're still trying to work through the kinks and and make, uh, get it more full featured. But uh, that I think we'll be ready with that at the end of Kilo to um, be able to run all the gating jobs at least for Horizon against this. Test. And that is all I had for. Uh, Kilo will continue to finish fleshing out API support. So um, Horizon has pretty good API support across OpenStack, but there there are certainly parts of the API that we don't represent. Um, and as as services move forward um, with new versions of the APIs and and adding uh, features, obviously we like to pick those up as well as well as we move along. So um, that will also be. Uh, I mean, that's a, that's a consistent focus of ours is, is to try and remain in sync with the other services. Um, and you feel free to contact me on uh, Freenode IRC at david-lyle, um, or you can email me at david.lyle at intel.com. Um, any, any, uh, we have weekly team meetings. The, the times oscillate, so uh, it's best to check out the OpenStack meetings page if you'd like to to uh, join in and, and provide some feedback or ask questions.